Hi everyone, welcome to my channel for fox sakes. Uh, this is a short video about pre detox, really, um, forewarning people and be you know, preparation emotionally, physically, socially, and all that sort of stuff. So, one of the most difficult things about detox is, you know, probably not so much with like 21 day detox, 7 day detox, 3 day detox and, you know, shorter sort of um, length of time, you know, taken doing the detox, but in the more long term, detoxification or quite possibly it's better to say diet and major lifestyle transformations um the main reason for this is because i've been on this detox well over three years now you know in that period um you know, I do eat treats, I'm not going to lie, you know, I eat a bag of crisps now and then, you know, especially when I'm not, you know, putting the gas, you know, full speed ahead, so to speak, so, um, you know, if I'm just sort of doing the fruit diet with a few steamed vegetables and avocado, which is one of the best fruits you can eat, I must add, um so yeah um i do have the odd cooked meal um but i try to stay away from that as much as possible i can do a video on that if anybody wishes uh, i possibly will do sometime in the future anyway uh but back to the point i was making make sure that you don't schedule any you know big meetings appointments anything you know physically strenuous um and also you know pre-warn family and let them know what to expect um so that they understand and they can act accordingly i love my family <laughs> words can't describe how much i love my family you know but one thing i will say unfortunately a lot of the time and they will disagree but me on the receiving end of their opinions and what they think and feel and how they speak to me um i feel it different with these shoes on where i'm actually viewing, you know, all these interactions with them. Um, so basically, I met with a lot of negativity. Um, I don't really see much of my mum. That's a different story. She's obviously got no time for me, you know. She obviously doesn't miss me that much. But anyway, back to the point I was making. I feel fed up for being doubted, questioned. You know, when I started this detox, it was basically in the new year, three years ago, you know, I was, I couldn't even do any artwork because I got, you know, tremors. I couldn't even write properly. I couldn't read my own fucking writing. And yeah, I am swearing in context. Um, in the morning, every morning, I would get up, and I would be desperate for the toilet. Usually, it's a normal thing for people to go to the toilet straight away in the morning. But it's, I know, for me, 
at least it wasn't a normal thing to be getting up at the age of 39 um, and yeah I've got to go downstairs for the toilet but that aside you know that doesn't mean that it's normal for me to if I don't run to the toilet quick you know I'm gonna like wet myself that's not normal I also had orange skin possibly yellow but it looked orange my palms and my hands looked orange and my feet my skin was dry but my face was just overly greasy disgusting you know um I had bad body odor um real like major depression as in like years constantly and so my family would say things like you know you've got a lot to be thankful for and these people were soft than you and well why do you feel like that you've got a lot going for you and if they're watching this I appreciate that but please, don't you think I've, I know that, really? Because I do, in case you were wondering, obviously I do. I'm not stupid, I'm not a cold-hearted person, I'm not overly selfish. I've had my moments, but I'm just human. And I forgive myself for that, and you know... That's all I can really say about it. But I do feel that there's lack of understanding and I've explained stuff time and time again in too much detail. And in my opinion, um, you know, unfairly treated where my own diet and my life and health and symptoms um come into it but also my daughter you know i'm constantly being told how to be a parent what not to say in front of her what not to do obviously you know i believe that being a, a mum the best mum you can be is work in progress you know we've only got ourselves to compare on in a fair comparison but I am me and that is all I can be is me and so I hope this isn't the case for anyone watching this video I mean I know there will be other people very similar to me and that's one of the reasons I'm doing this video. But I really hope that you've got people that are going to show you love by what they do or not do, but give you space for you to do and be and say. I hope they don't invalidate your feelings. I've done this to my own daughter, done being, you know, it's not the present situation. And if it was, I'd call myself out on that because I don't want to be that person. I don't want to make my daughter feel there's something wrong with her because she feels like this or like that or the other. I don't want to say to my daughter, well, Calm down then, don't, you know, shh, just, you know, people are watching. There is one example where she wanted to learn to tie shoelaces and I was so impatient. You know, it's horrible to look back and remember that that came from me. But in my defence, I wasn't aware of it. I wasn't even aware that I should be aware of it. I'm not blaming my mum, my dad, or anyone. But all I'm saying is, you parent how you've been shown, not what you're told, by how you've been shown by your caregivers 
direct actions or not towards you. You also pick up phobias if that's what you experience. You also pick up other spiritual, call it what you will, emotional, personality, dysfunctions and bad habits. You know, like codependency because of feeling abandoned. And I feel abandoned by my mum. Not once. Not twice, but four times. But that's another story. Um, so, one example of invalidation of feelings. When my mum left my dad, which was really painful to see on the third time it happened, given I was in a violent relationship as well, and I had to just repress that, because I've never seen my dad so devastated in my life. Part of me died that day. And then I started to hate my mum, like really hate her for what she'd done to my dad, my rock, the protector, the provider. You know, I had to watch my dad beg on his bended knees, begging for my mum not to leave him. Um, so then she didn't take me with her. I'm glad in a way, shit happens for a reason, you know. But, basically, she used to say, I'll, I'll pick you up on whenever, at whatever time. I'll give you a ring on Tuesday or whatever day it would be. And guess what? No show. No go. That never changed. It still didn't change up to the most recent time in my life where I've gone minimal contact. Which has improved my life and I hate to say that. I've got one mum. I'd hate Lucy to, th to think of me like how I do my mum. There's no question I love her. But this love on condition, you know, and gaslighting me, you know, there's way more. But to have people, you know, put it this way, I would never talk or try to talk anyone out of something that they thought was for their best, right? Because what if it goes tits up? Oh, well, they learn that they were wrong and they've learnt something about their own ad. And so, you know, when you love someone, one of the things that shows that is being supportive. As a parent, sometimes our job is to just fucking weigh it until we do or don't have to pick up the pieces. And so, my mum wasn't like that, isn't like that. Doesn't want to be aware of her actions, how it's affected me and my younger sibling. And for my dad to say, I was there, you know, I went through it as well. Yeah, you did to some degree, Dad. But your wife left you. My mum left me. My mum. You could say, well, my ma or your mum left you. She died though, Dad. She did not have a choice. My mum did have a choice and chose to just disappear without even a care in the world or a look back cold and so what does that do well it made me feel worthless unlovable 
not good enough, not worthy, a reject, an imposter, a waste of space. So that was when I was 15. You don't just suddenly then start obtaining from God knows where self-esteem, confidence, faith in yourself, love in yourself. You have to have that invested into you. And so this is where personality disorders come from. And, you know, <laughs> things, you know, like that, emotional disorders and dysregulations, disease, disease. And so, <sighs> I... Yes, to to be invalidated because that's what it is. Just to want to put a word and a and a associative action or meaning to that. I'm not pointing the blame because what can I do about that? The only thing I can do something about is me, my actions, my words, my diet, my choice. That's my responsibility. And that's what I intend to do, to respond. Not be triggered and go off like a gun, you know. Um, and so I always overly explain myself. But I can't help keep coming to the same conclusion that I would not expect that, nor would I demand it, of anyone. And least of all, Lacey, it's really hurtful that my family all say, still now, but don't you think you ought to come off that detox? But don't you think, you know, stop talking to your daughter about the fruit diet. It's it's making her not want to eat or it's making her want to eat more or she don't want to hear it. Well, a lot of children, our children, should listen to, need to and have to listen to shit they don't want to hear. I still do to this day. You never stop being a daughter or a son someone's child ever none of us do you know stating the obvious but it's true um so yeah i feel a, a lack of support there's reasons for this and certain behaviors but the one that i'm actually talking about now invalidation of feelings is pretty destructive because from an early age or whatever age it happens from if it's from birth then how are you meant to see that something you've grown up with like the elephant in the room you never see the fucking elephant till someone asks oh how come you've got an elephant in the room dog that's a bit strange oh well, it become part of furniture. <laughs> Didn't even realise it was there after so long. And so how can you become aware of these parenting sort of issues, maybe, in myself, red flags, that I need improving on if I wish to be the best parent to Lacey and not be a parent that's you know, not willing to consider it's not about me. Being a parent is about the child, ultimately. So, yes, um, 
I just wanted to touch on that. I know I've been off of the point, back to the point, off of the point and skirting all around the houses with this video. I appreciate that. So take note. Sometimes unresolved issues, emotional issues, issues, um, if they're not dealt with and, you know, brought out into the open, dealt with and then, you know, it's done, then every time you remember, revisit, or when it's resent you, or you resend it, resentment, um, you go into basically run on the sympathetic nervous system, which doesn't know whether you're physically there and reliving that situation, or whether you're just remembering, and that's a memory. So basically, it takes action accordingly. One of the reasons I'm on this fruit detox in the first place is because I had adrenal fatigue. I was in renal failure. Now, I didn't get a doctor to tell me this. But I've studied the body, disease, drugs, you know, whatever. Because I'm interested in this shit. The thing is, though, you can't study walking down that path with your made-to-measure shoes on your feet, right? And so I'll close this video by saying this. Whoever needs to hear this, don't let nobody throw you off kilter. You know in your own heart that's the difference. So if someone's not there for you and you feel a void, you feel abandoned or lonely or like you're not part of something or someone else's, whatever, yeah. Just remember that you know and they think. That's all you need to know. But you also just remember, but we're all only human. We're all only works in progress. We're all on the same ground, dimension, timeline, whatever you want to call it. So we're all fighting our own battles. And just try to stay in a loving, neutral energy where you don't have to pay bad karma. In my experience, you know. A lot of people tried making me feel that it was a bad trait or characteristic that I do. Um, I put up with a lot of shit. I put up and sometimes I shut up, sometimes I put up and don't fucking shut up, but I've been subjected by my own free will to some gnarly situations, some very dark gnarly situations. And so, you know, I know my own body very well, more so now than ever. I've repaired my renal failure. I've cured my Raynards. If you don't know what Raynards is, look it up if you're interested. Other people that know what I'm on about will know. My skin's getting better. I've had a lifetime of shit skin. Like, on so many levels. Um, I've got rid of a couple of thread veins and varicose veins that were coming on my legs. There is still some there, but there's a noticeable improvement. 
also my eyes and looking at the health and biometric markers that we can see from the eyes um, basically I've been studying iridology and it is amazingly informative amazingly interesting and so yeah I study this type of stuff because I'm in awe about it I want to know about it and I've got the shoes on so I'm not just going to college being told what to write being told what's the result being told what an outcome is I've actually crawled along that path sometimes dragged myself with fingernails along that path you know even if I've known it's not necessarily good for me basically nobody likes being told what to do and so if they tell you this and you carry on doing that they're just going to be the usual type rebel that's not always a choice Sometimes it's a reflex. One very common, notable behaviour from past traumatic experiences is to be avoidant, to escape reality. To be triggered, basically defensive and jump down people's throats all the time, even from suggestions or ideas, you know, because you're so used to being on eggshells. And you know, it's like you against the world, that's how I felt. Feelings aren't evidence, but I'm sat in that shit, just me and myself looking outwards and no one's on my side so yeah also there was one situation not so long ago with my daughter that she knew she was loved but she didn't feel loved I was made to address that and thank you I'm glad I did and I'd do it again God knows this, I'd do it again. But when I expressed the same, not straight after, it, it was some time after, and that's it, irrelevant. When I felt the same, and that's karma, as my daughter did, and so I knew where that had come from in me and tried to address it, I was met with really hurtful comments like, but you're an adult now, you should know not to feel this, do that, say that, be that, show that, want that, not want that, do that, whatever it is. Like I said at the start, if something isn't invested into you, if you've not seen this regular pattern of how the normal life is for you and where you're born and into that family or whatever you know you're not gonna suddenly just get that like a light switch coming on and I love myself enough to know that because before I would have disregarded myself disrespected myself and self-loathing being the number one that I would go to to self-destruct and then I'd be then I'd be um had a word with about that also so you were like I couldn't fucking win ever and still can't but in my reality 
it's win-win. If people doubt you, it's their problem. It's not your doubt. Don't wear it. Don't eat it. Don't see it. Don't speak it. Only you know. And when you know, sometimes the people that just think they think they know have got to go. That's what... <laughs> I don't know which is harder, the fruit detox or the part of cutting people off. My mum's part of me, I'm part of my mum. But I, I can't have my daughter growing up looking at me accepting behaviours just because I'm used to it type shit. Why? Because she'll end up like me. I don't want that for her. I want better. And so, if she don't see that shit, she won't take that on. You know, if anyone is listening to this and wants to disagree, come at me. But you've got to explain why, you know, and what brought you to your conclusion. I'd love to hear it. Because I think I've studied psychology. Just as a fucking hobby. And what I've learnt is. Basically. What I've learnt is. What I'm trying to share with these videos. With my channel. I want people to know what I should have known, what I believe still to this day, I should have been taught by my mum, shown. It's hard. Really hard. But... Only you can get in your own way. Anyway, I love you all. I know it's been a long run. But the shit I pay attention to in my life is my life. And I put my life into it because that's where my focus goes. And I spend that time. That's the only currency you need to be spending. It's the most important one. It's the one that you take with you when you die. All that sort of shit. I know now. That time is 